שלום לכולם. ברשות הקהל המקומי אני אעבור לאנגלית שהיא שפת המושב הזה. Good afternoon to everyone. The plenary session that we're now going to take part in uh, has the title Israel, Aram, and Assyria between Bible and archaeology. There will be four speakers, five speakers as a matter of fact, and I, uh, as I looked over the program and uh, conducted an com email conversation with the uh, presenters, uh, actually uh, it's Israel and Aram because we're dealing mostly with the ninth century this afternoon. But then uh, I just heard from uh, our first uh, speaker that uh, Assyria was added so that I would be chairman. <laughs> so there you are. Uh, our, first, uh, our first speaker this afternoon is uh, Talai Ornan, who is sec a senior lecturer in the departments of archaeology and art history here at the Hebrew University. She's a specialist on the art of the ancient Near East, focusing on religious aspects conveyed through pictorial representations. She is currently working on a publication of a horde of second millennium bronze statuary recovered at Tel Chazor. Her presentation will treat the relations between ancient Israel and Assyria in pre-Assyrian Iron Age II, though an, through an examination of Syrian and Syrianized pictorial renderings which are depicted on local finds and which manifest Aramean and Neo-Hittite, that is, Luvian affinities. In parenthesis for everyone, we have until five. Each presentation is a half hour. If uh, our speakers get to the half hour, you'll have to ask your questions uh, afterwards. If there's some time at the end of the presentation to fill up the half hour, uh, I'll open it up for discussion. Uh, okay, our first uh, pr uh, presentation, uh, Dr. Talai Ornan. Shalom Rav, Gamani Evor Langlit, Alpia Mitsuve Alenu Bakenisase. Uh, this lecture focuses on the connections between Israel and Syria as reflected by the inspiration of Syrian works of art on objects found in modern Israel. I will present here some of the probable Syrian motifs that are found on few rather well-known artifacts, much of, most of which discovered in the northern part of the country. The time spent to be discussed cover the late Iron Age I and the beginning of Iron Age II, ending in the latter half of the 8th century preceding the Assyrian domination. In accordance with the contemporary cultural historical development, developments of research in Syria, I will distinguish here, when possible, between Aramean sources of inspiration and Luvian ones still referred as a new Hittite in many scholarly publications. Luvian art, termed after the ethnic and linguistic entity which existed in the Hittite Empire in Anatolia, is known from North Syrian and East Anatolian city-states, which flourished after the fall of the Hittite Empire at the beginning of the 12th century. Iron Age Luvian art, maintain to a certain degree elements of Hittite iconography and is best observed in sites inside, such as Karkemish, Malatya Melid, and the citadel of Aleppo, Haleb. Whereas Luvian works of art are found in Iron Age I and the beginning of Iron Age II periods, recognized Aramean monuments 
are not yet known before the ninth century. Indeed, it was during the ninth and eighth centuries when the Arameans spread over Syria, abandoning their age-old nomad and semi-nomad way of life in favor of urban settlements. Whereas the Luvian flourished in, the, in northern Syria, and their traces are not found south of Hama, Hamat, Aramean states were spread from Tel Khalaf Gozan in the land of Lake on the Habur in the east, to Bet Zamani in the vicinity of Merdin, nowadays Turkey, in the north, to Aram Damascus, bordering the northern kingdom of Israel in the south. While biblical Aram reflects the various Aramean states, the Luvians are to be identified with the biblical Hittites, Hittim, alluding to the use of the term Hatti in neo Assyrian sources for the Syrian territories located west, west of the Euphrates. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, it, it is, I, I'm, I'm sure you see it's better, but for me it's a little difficult to see what I have written. So maybe I'll do... Okay. Okay. I wish to begin our survey um, with object that while their source of inspiration in Syria can be located geographically, the specific entity of the people use similar objects is not clear. These pottery stands found in Tel Echov, on which you will hear later from Professor Mazara, and Tela, situated east of the Jordan River, these are dated to the late 10th, early 9th century. In shape, they resemble clay stands found in various sites located at the Middle Euphrates region, dated to the 13th century, and thus mirror the late impact of Middle Euphrates affinities on the Upper Jordan Valley. The question is whether we can associate these similarities with a specific ethnic group living in the Middle Euphrates in the late Bronze, early Iron Age. It is of interest for the present discussion whether we can associate this type of artifact with semi-nomad Aramean tribes living in the Middle Euphrates in this period. Indeed, according to some scholars, the land of Kir mentioned as origin of Aram in Amos 9-7 can be identified with the area east of Jabal el Bishri and the Middle Euphrates. And thus, the Celtic stands from Pela and Rehov may provide us with an early manifestation of an Aramean impact in the, Aaron, in the early Iron Age II period. Sorry. Whereas, however, the shape of the Rehov and Tela Kalstens 